Hello and welcome to this brief tutorial on how to find articles using JSTOR. JSTOR is one of the many databases we have here at the Cal Poly Pomona University Library. Unlike subject-specific databases like PsycInfo, JSTOR is a multi-subject database with materials that cover topics as diverse as poetry and chemistry. This makes it a useful tool for finding peer-reviewed materials on a variety of topics. Unfortunately, it can also bury you in a huge amount of irrelevant results. So in this tutorial, we will cover not only how to search JSTOR, but also the techniques you need in order to get a workable set of relevant results. To access this database, start at the library homepage, which you can access via Google by typing in CPP Library. On the library homepage, we're going to navigate to the button marked Databases here. Clicking on this link will take you to an alphabetical list of all our databases, as JSTOR starts with J. Shocking, I know. Clicking on that letter will take you to a list of all our databases that start with J. And lo and behold, there's only one. It's JSTOR. So you can click here on the link that will take you to JSTOR. Now, if you're attempting to access the database from off campus, you will be prompted at this point to log in with your Bronco ID and password go ahead and do so. Once you've logged in, or if you're on campus, you're going to be taken to the basic search page for JSTOR. Now, JSTOR's homepage is this friendly Google-like page that invites you to just plug in your keywords into the search box and see what happens. This is how you get buried in 30,000 hits. Don't do it. Instead, notice the link below the box marked Advanced Search. Well, my friends, the first commandment of JSTOR is always use advanced search. Clicking on the advanced search link takes us to a search page with a lot more filters and limiters. Before you input your keywords, you should check off a few of these limiters. The first limiter I want you to notice is the item type limiter. This limiter filters your results by the type of material being presented. So you can limit your results to journal articles, book reviews, ebooks, pamphlets, etc. This limiter is crucial to helping you get a manageable set of search results because JSTOR is notorious for burying you in book reviews. How do you avoid that? By telling JSTOR right at the beginning that the only thing you're interested in are articles. And you do this by checking off the articles box right here. Now, if you scroll down a little further, you'll notice there's a journal filter which filters your results by academic discipline. Let's say you were looking for articles on poetry by J.R.R. R. Tolkien, the author of The Lord of the Rings. You're probably not going to find a lot of articles on his poetry in the business or criminology journals. But if you scroll down, you'll see a box marked Language and Literature right here. That sounds like a good place to look, so let's check off the box. Now you'll notice that right next to the discipline name, there's a number, in this case, 405 titles. This means that by checking off this limiter, you're telling JSTOR that you only want it to search the 405 journals in this subsection of the database instead of all the journals it has. You can check off multiple disciplines if necessary. You will also notice, as we scroll up here to the top, that JSTOR has no peer-reviewed filter. This is because all the journals in JSTOR are peer-reviewed, so any articles you retrieve from this database will also be peer-reviewed, and therefore you don't need to worry about it. So having told JSTOR that we want journal articles from the language and literature journals, let's scroll up to the search boxes and put in some search terms. In this case, we'll put in Tolkien and Poetry, and we'll hit Search. And we get 698 results. That isn't bad. If we want to narrow our results a little more, we have a couple of options. First, we can limit by the date of publication. Let's say we only want articles published in the last 20 years. So we can type in and click Apply. That's going to cut us down to 233 results. Let's just click on this first result here, J.R.R. Tolkien's Creative Ethic and its Finnish Analogs. You'll notice JSTOR provides you with a preview of the article in the center screen here, so you can read the abstract off of the preview before you decide to download it. If you want to download this article, you're going to click on the button marked Download PDF. When you do so, you will be confronted by this ominous pop-up window that asks you if you accept JSTOR's terms and conditions. 
What they're asking you here is if you agree to abide by copyright law and not sell copies of this article to your classmates. So treat this like you treat any other set of terms and conditions on the internet. Click accept and proceed to the download. At this point, you'll see that you have a PDF, which you can save or print as you wish. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or need help using JSTOR or any of our other library resources, please contact the University Library. You can call the reference desk at 909-869-3084 or email text us at libraryhelp at cpp.edu.